I've been using an iPhone as my everyday phone for a while now, and I recently upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro, but I'm switching to the Pixel 7 Pro, and I'm gonna tell you why. So, for anyone new here, first of all, my name is Michael Bryan, and I am not a fanboy or a hater of either iPhones or Androids. I've, I've used both, I respect both operating systems, and they both are, are good for their own reasons. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, you need to choose one that stays in your pocket as your everyday phone. And for the past year, for me, that has been the iPhone. I really like a lot about that. But it's time for me to switch, and in this video, I'm gonna dive into the reasons I'm switching, as well as the fundamental differences between these, the pros and the cons of the iPhone 14 Pro and the Google Pixel 7 Pro. For me, those are really the two best phones on the market right now, and so we'll talk about the cameras, the design, the displays, the features, and everything else that I use to consider which phone would actually be my everyday phone. Now, let's actually start off with the features, and obviously there's far more features on either of these phones than I could possibly cover in this video, but I wanna highlight some of the main differences between some of the main features that I really like. So I wanna start off with the features on the Pixel. The first one that I really like here is Google's exceptional ability to transcribe and transcript both on the phone and off the phone. And what I mean by that is on the phone would be audio from videos and things like that. This does a fantastic job of transcribing everything with some real-time captions on videos, even if they're not available from, say, YouTube, for example. Then we also have translation. So transcription tra translation is the other one, where if you're watching content in another language, Google does a really good job of translating to your language. And then, of course, the off the phone stuff I was talking about from the microphone, we have Google Translate and just general translation with here does a fantastic job. And then probably the most exciting one, in my opinion, is the uh, microphone-based transcription. So if you're using the Record app on here, it just does an absolutely fantastic job. Like you can actually put this in your pocket and use the transcription feature and it'll get your entire conversation absolutely perfect from my experience. And the second suite of features that Google adds that I really like is, is related to phone calls. So we've hold for me, direct my call, call screening, and a few others. And so starting off with an outgoing call, if you call some business and they have a whole list of different things, like press one for this, blah, 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 and it takes like several minutes to go through that. I swear it's forever. This has direct my call, which Google already knows what those options are before you even make the call. And so while they're like the robots reading through press one for whatever, Google shows you all the options. You can tap on that and it saves so much time. And the second thing is hold for me. So if you're calling the IRS and you're sitting there and you're waiting forever, one hour of hold music, like nobody wants to listen to that. So Google has a feature called hold for me where it'll just stay on hold, your phone's totally silent. And when somebody starts talking, your phone will ring and you can pick it up. It's so amazing. I love having that. And then the third suite of features that I really like here is related to making photos better and easier. So we'll talk a lot about the cameras, of course, but Google has some really cool features in here like Magic Eraser, which can literally just make things disappear behind you. It's so easy to do that on, on, on the Pixel. We also have Face Unblur, so it takes a bunch of photos and, and really does a good job of unblurring photos. And on the other hand, we have motion blurs. But getting over to the iPhone, there's some really big features that I love about the iPhone 14 Pro. Starting off with MagSafe. This is by far my favorite feature and the one that I am going to miss the most when leaving the iPhone. So MagSafe just obviously is a magnet on the back that also allows you to wirelessly charge. And so I never ever have to worry about my battery life on my iPhone because it's just always charging. Like when I'm at my desk, it's sitting on a, ch on a charging stand. When I get in my car, boom, I slap this on the dashboard. It's sticking there magnetically, it's charging. I'm ready to go. I love having that. And of course, there are like wireless charging stands for a Pixel, but it just doesn't compete with MagSafe in my opinion. The second one is Dynamic Island. I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, Dynamic Island, not that great, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, it's great. It's really a nice thing to have. I think it's a great use of the software because it's a great way to switch between apps and see like timers and music and other important things on the top of your phone. Granted, like the little pill shape cutout is distracting when you're watching media. I'll talk more about that when I talk about the displays. But the third thing with Apple is, I hate to say this, but it's the ecosystem. And I'm not gonna dive into iMessage and FaceTime because I don't think those are actually that big of a deal for me. What I do kind of have a problem with is the ecosystem sucks you in because you only need one really good device, right? Like it's easy to switch AirPods. There's plenty of other great earbuds. But for me, the one that gets me is the lap. Because I'm stuck with the MacBook Pro, 
Like switching photos from my Pixel to my MacBook is a huge headache. I have to use like Android File Transfer, which is like this app built like 10 years ago. And then on the flip side, the iPhone can just airdrop things. Regardless, I am switching over to Pixel. I'm gonna make it work. Now, getting into the next category here, let's talk about the design with these. These obviously have a totally different approach to a phone while still being a, a totally basic glass slab. But I'll explain what I mean by that. So. Of course, the iPhone is very boxy. I like that because uh, not only do we have the matte back and the boxy sides that make it extremely grippable without any need for a case, um, whereas on the Pixel, it is rounded on the edges, so it, it feels a little bit slippery there, and on the back as well, it can be very slick. The one thing that is a benefit of it being rounder, though, is that it does look and feel slimmer as opposed to the iPhone. The sharper edges make it feel uh, boxier and bigger. The aesthetics with these, I really like the colors of the iPhone, like if I can get it right, it really looks purple um, in some lighting, but in other lighting it looks more of like a darker, kind of almost black. Uh, and I, like, I really like the gold one as well, so the colors on the iPhone, the matte finish, fantastic job there, and I love the boxy look, but the camera bump is absolutely massive this year. And as far as camera bumps go, I think Pixel did it best with this little bar. I think that looks so much nicer. It's really a clean and pretty iconic look already. But flipping over to the front, this is where you have a pretty big difference between these phones. The Pixel obviously has a little camera on the top, but it's a really, really tiny hold punch where you're getting a much larger, larger pill shape on the iPhone, and so with that large pill shape, when you're watching media, it kind of blocks, like it's, it's a little bit annoying, it cuts out some of your media viewing uh, real estate there, and on top of that, you have very, very rounded corners, so I find that the boxier design of the Pixel just gives you a much better media viewing experience. They both have really good color, they both now have always on displays, although the always on display is very, very different on these, um, where you can see on the iPhone, you're getting a lot of color in there, it's kind of hard to see on camera, uh, but the Pixel does a really good job of using very, very little power, so it's extremely dark. You know, whichever one you like better, definitely leave a comment. I'm interested to see which one you think looks better uh, because it does use a lot of power and it distracts me and I always think the phone is on when it's, when it's not actually on. We also have some interesting biometrics. So on the iPhone, of course, Face ID, super secure, super reliable. On the Pixel, on the other hand, you do have Face ID now, but it is not using the same infrared that we saw on the iPhone, which means it's just using the camera, which is less secure, which is why Google doesn't let you use that for contactless payments. It does also have an optical fingerprint sensor down below. So I, I really like having both, whichever one's faster, like if you're wearing a mask and a hat, Boom, fingerprint sensor, if your hands are wet, face ID, really great way to sign in. Now, some things that the iPhone has, of course, we can't forget that it has that switch on the right side or left side. That switch is so classic. Like, I just, I love having that. The Pixel does have the advantage of USB Type-C to charge, which is far superior in my opinion. Something that neither of these do very well is charge. Wireless charging is pretty slow with these. Wired charging is faster, but really not that fast, especially compared to something like OnePlus, the OnePlus 10T goes from zero to 100% in like 20 minutes. Now, as far as the cameras go, this is obviously a huge reason to buy either one of these, but they both do a fantastic job. So you really need to kind of look at the fringe, like the edge cases to figure out which one's better because in like a good lighting with good color, as you can see here, they both do a fantastic job with photos with the wide angle, the ultra wide, the telephoto lens. They just do a really good job. The telephoto lenses though, are different, so when you're really zooming in, there's the first fringe case here. The Pixel, in my opinion, does a better job. So the iPhone has a 3X optical zoom lens, and you can zoom in up to 15X, so that's all digital after that, uh, up to 15, I mean, whereas the Pixel has a 5X optical, but what, you can actually zoom in up to 30X, it's very digital, obviously, zoom there, um, but it is gonna be a little bit grainy once you get that far in, but looking at these both at the equivalent 15X zoom, the Pixel, in my opinion, does a much, much better job there. Now, the iPhone photos in general are a little bit warmer, but iPhone has their different photo styles you can switch through. So if you go to a more contrasty one, like you can see here, then it looks a little bit more similar to the Pixel, and I think it really just comes down to a matter of preference. But as far as video goes, iPhone has historically had much, much better video than any competitor out there. The Pixel has come a really long way. Sometimes it's a little bit jittery, especially if you zoom in or if you're running around a lot. Uh, but as you can see, when you zoom in all the way, it's like jittery, but not really jittery. So what I mean is it tries so hard to lock into something that if you're holding still enough, it'll stay perfectly locked in and it's better than the iPhone, which kind of wobbles around a little bit. But the thing with the Pixel is if you move a little bit too far, instead of like panning over, it'll just like lock over to the next thing. So it does get a little bit jittery like that. So if you have a steady hand, 
zooming in on the pixel is gonna make it ultra steady. In low light, they both do a really good job here, but again, a very different job with low light video and with low light photos, as you can see here. Um, and they do also have macro lenses, but not really. They have like macro abilities on the ultra wide lens. Now, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of talk about photos and videos looking a lot better when you're using social media on an iPhone versus on a Pixel. So let's actually test those out. These are photos taken from Snapchat. These are videos taken on Snapchat. And then these are photos from Instagram's camera. And these are videos taken from Instagram's camera. You can leave a comment and let me know which one actually looks better to you. Okay, so what do we talk about? Features, design, camera, Next one, specs. With these, I'm not like a big spec guy. Like, I mean, specs are great, but the problem is like you get into benchmarks and, and oh, you're comparing one thing to another. The actual experience is what really matters. So they're both like really fast. They're gonna be great for different things like AI on Google versus like video processing on the, on the iPhone. What does matter is the storage you get. They both have a base storage of 128 gigabytes or for the iPhone only, one terabyte. Uh, but as far as battery life goes, like the iPhone 13 Pro for me was better than the iPhone 14 Pro. They both have a really solid battery life though when they're getting through like a full day. The iPhone like uh, with this size in particular does a little bit better because it is a little beefier with the battery while still having a slightly smaller display than the Pixel. But Google does a really good job with their standby. So if you're not using your phone, like it uses almost no power at all. As far as the price goes with these, you see a lot of people like shouting from the mountains, like the Pixel is the best value ever. And while it totally is, like the Pixel 7 is a total value king, the Pixel 7 Pro, it's not like, it's still really a great value, but it's not like it's half the price of the iPhone. You're talking about $899 for the Pixel versus $999 for the iPhone. So, you know, definitely a difference, but not like the biggest difference ever. What are, there are a couple other differences I didn't mention earlier. So when you're using a, an, an Android in general, but specifically the Pixel here, you do have the option to use AppDex or AppDex HG or LDAC or these other codecs that if you're using Bluetooth earbuds or headphones, do give you higher resolution audio. Uh, we do also have more smartwatch options, but the catch here is you don't have an Apple Watch. So Apple Watch is kind of the front runner with the best software and the best interface right now. But the other watches, like if you like the style of the Fossil Gen 6 or you know Samsung watches. So ultimately, why am I switching from the iPhone 14 Pro to the Pixel 7 Pro? Well, I think that these are both fantastic phones, first of all. They've got nine rounds here and they both have really subtle trade-offs. I could use either one of these for the next year and be beyond happy. They're incredible phones. But the real reason I'm switching is because I think too many people get too defensive about the phone that they use. Like if you use an iPhone for two or three years in a row, then switching over to an Android, you're only going to notice the things that are missing. You won't notice the, the, the fun, incredible new features. And the other way around as well, people on Android side just get so defensive and don't like iPhones. And so for me personally, I made it a point to every year switch between my main phone being an iPhone and then an Android. And last year was iPhone, which means this year it's going to be an Android. And of all the Android phones out there, I think the Pixel 7 Pro is the best one. It's the one that really fits my needs the best. So that's the reason I'm switching to the Pixel 7 Pro. I hope you can respect that. Like if you have a comment, if you have any ideas about uh, what you like about either one of these phones, I would love to hear it in the comments below. You can also talk to me over on Twitter and on Instagram. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, consider subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien. 